Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3. We'll begin reading from verse. Galatians 3 verse 3. Hallelujah. And I believe the Lord will minister to all of us on today. Anybody glad to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. Galatians 3. In verse 3. Are ye so foolish, having began in the spirit, and are now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministers to you the spirit, and worketh miracles among you, does he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathens through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You can stop right there. Th this morning, I want to talk to you briefly on redeemed from the curse. <laughs> redeemed from the curse. I don't know about you, but I've been redeemed. From the curse. Somebody just look at your neighbor just for the very first time. We, we, haven't, we haven't got into this yet. Just look at him and tell him, I'm redeemed from the curse. I, I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm, re, I'm redeemed from the curse. When we come into the book of Galatians, it's a very unique book. It's very unique. It's unique not because it is the 48th book of the Bible and it pans over 16 chapters with about 149 verses, not that alone, but that this book is unique because theologians struggle as to where to place this book. Uh, Paul the Apostle is the, the author of this book. It is very, very much known because his autobiography is in this text, it's in this book alone. He tells them, I am, I'm not, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He tells them the authenticity of his apostleship. He, he tells them, I'm not subservient, I'm not subservient to, uh, to Paul or the other, other apostles in Jerusalem. He tells them that I, I receive my apostleship by Jesus, by revelation of Jesus Christ. He tells them that I did not go to Jerusalem to be 
taught by Peter or the rest of the apostles. I got my personal revelation from God. Otherwise, you've got to know God for yourself. Look at somebody and tell him you got to know God for yourself. You, you got to know God for you. Paul, Paul is writing here and he's letting us know that my apostleship is authentic. It's authentic. Now, he does not talk, he doesn't talk to these people like he would talk to other, uh, other churches in, in, in his care. He doesn't begin, normally Paul would begin by a greeting. He, he would begin by saying, grace and peace be unto you through our Lord Jesus Christ. He does not, he does not say that here. He is, he's a man that, is, that, that has a passion. He is a man that is highly upset. He's a man that has to uh, state a claim as to, uh, as to what's due him. He's a man that has been somewhat side-checked or somewhat sidestepped and somewhat ridiculed. And, 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 and Paul got tired of being, of, being the, uh, of being the stepchild and he's trying to make a claim as to who he is in the kingdom of God. And so when you look at, when you look at Galatians, it, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a doctoral book. It, he, it's really, he's bringing doctrine. His doctrine is, it is faith in Jesus alone, not anything else that brings one to salvation. It is, say, it is faith in Jesus alone. It is called justification by faith. It is a doctoral, doctoral book. It, it, is, it is food of, of, of doctrines as, as Paul begins to lay out the foundations of faith in God and Jesus alone. And he begins to, he begins to debunk the idea that, you, it, 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 that you, have, you have to have Jesus and something else. Jesus and, and the law of Moses. Jesus and my little, uh, uh, my little, uh, 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 you know, a doll in the corner, in the back, in the booth. Jesus and my holy dirt. Jesus and my holy place. No, Jesus is, is big enough to handle whatever you need him to handle. You don't need Jesus and. And so he, he begins to address that claim. He begins to address that claim, especially, especially when we're coming to the, 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 the African or even African-American faith where we begin to uh, 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 bring Jesus and plus something. Jesus plus this. Jesus plus what I put under my bed. Jesus plus the, that, that little thing I rub just for good luck. Jesus, are you following me now? That, 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 that Jesus plus my little voodoo, voodoo doll. Jesus plus my, 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 my little incantation. No, no. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. And so Paul is, is he's, he's stating a claim as to this doctrine of justification by faith. Theologians struggle as to where to place this book because some has, has said, is he addressing, uh, is he addressing the, 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 the providence of Asia Minor in the north or is he addressing the providence of Asia Minor in the south? There is a, there is a contradiction of thought. If he's addressing the Asia Minor or the, or the churches, the churches in Asia Minor in the north, then, he, then this book is written somewhere around 54 uh, uh, BC uh, 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 or AD, excuse me. If he's, if he's, if he's addressing the, the, the Asia Minor in the south, then it's written much sooner, somewhere around 45 uh, 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 BC. And so, and so there is a contradiction in thought. Now, Asia, or, or let me say Galatian, uh, the book of Galatia is not like the book of Corinth where it's written to a particular church. No, this is a region of churches. It's, it's in the Roman, Roman uh, 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 peninsula. It, it, it's in the Roman Empire. And it, it really encompasses four different cities. It's the uh, um, uh, 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 Antioch, uh, Iconia, Lystra, and Dobie. It is his first missionary, it's part of his first missionary journey. He goes to that place to establish uh, the churches. You find, that in, you find that in Acts chapter 13. 
right after he was sanctioned by the, by the elders, the Bible says that they laid hands on him and the Holy Ghost spoke after praying and fasting, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work I have called them to. That work was this work. Are you following me now? And so they went to they went to they went to Antioch and they began to preach the word of God there. They went to Dobi and Lystra and Iconium and began to preach the word of God there. And many things were done. You would know that uh, when they went to when when they began their missionary journey, uh, the Bible says they, they would go to Antioch and begin to uh, 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 they, they begin to uh, uh, proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. The Bible says that uh, that they they preach the gospel, and the next the next the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city came to hear Paul preach. It was that bold and that strong. Then the Bible says he would go to Lystra, and as he was preaching the word of God in Lystra, there was a man that was listening to Paul. And as he was listening to Paul, Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed. The Bible says that he was lame from his mother's womb. Paul looked at him and perceived that he had a uh, faith to be healed. And so he said, stand up on your feet in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he stood up on his feet and the whole crowd erupted. They said this in, in, in Acts 14 verse 11. They said, the gods has come down in the likeness of men. That's how bold this man preached. And so this is years after this. This, uh, uh, this, this, this inauguration, this years after this introduction of Jesus Christ, Paul would now write back to the same church that has seen miracles and wonders and, and, and all kinds of, of things happen in their lives, signs and wonders and miracles. And he would write to them and he would begin to state a claim because after he left, there were the Jude Judaizers had come into that region. And they were preaching that Paul did not give them the authentic gospel. They were preaching that no, it was not just just uh, 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 Jesus alone, but, but 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 for them to be for them to be true Christians, they would have to circumcise themselves. Are you following me now? Now understand this: these were not devil worshippers. These were men. These were men in the church. Hmm? They weren't, they, weren't, they, they, they weren't outside of the faith. They were in the faith. And they were simply saying that, okay, for you to be like us, you have, you have to do what we do. Hmm? In other words, for you to experience the goodness of God in our lives, that in your life, you have to have the same experience uh, that I have experienced. Uh, let me say this, just because I don't experience the same thing you experience doesn't mean my faith is that authentic. Are you following me now? And so they were only, they were only saying what they knew. They were saying what they knew. But what they knew was not necessarily right. Are you following me now? They were saying what they knew, but what they knew was not necessarily right. And so now the Bible says... They begin, to, they begin to put that burden on them to obey the Mosaic law. The problem with the Mosaic law is, um, uh, James would tell us in James chapter 2 and verse 10, he would tell us that in the Mosaic law, if you break one of the law, you broke all of the law. Are you following me now? So you can't patch and piece obeying the law. It's either you fully obey the law. Now, the problem, about the, the problem about the law is not that it was bad. The problem about the law is that it was too good for us to meet. The standards were too high that we couldn't meet those standards. The law was given to show us our transgressions. Are you sure? Are you following me? The law was given to, 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 to point us to the fact that we need a savior. We need a redeemer. The law was not given for you to obey the law. The law was given so you understand that I am incapable of obeying the law. Are you following me now? And so, and so, and so, Paul comes back to address those Judaizers as to, as to the fallacy of their teaching. 
he was bold. He was strong. He said this. If somebody preaches another, if somebody preaches another gospel that you've never heard, the gospel that, that, that you didn't hear from me, he said that person is cursed by God. That's how strong he was preaching. He said if you hear something else and I didn't say it and did not come out of my mouth, that gospel is, a, is another gospel and, is, and it is no gospel at all. It is fallacy. Are you following me now? No, 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 no. And so as Paul begins to preach, he, he, he starts this text by saying, he says, Oh, foolish Galatians. Now, how, how, would, you, how, would, you want, <laughs> how would you like to receive a, a letter? And, 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 and the, the, third, the third chapter, the third paragraph, you, you, you know, the person tells you, Oh, foolish boy. <laughs> That's fighting words right there. Oh, foolish boy. He says, oh, foolish Galatians. How is it that you have started in the spirit? Are you now made perfect in the flesh? How is it that you've seen all these miracles? Like a billboard, like a billboard, you've seen the display of God over your life. And how is it that you've seen all this goodness that God has done in your midst, yet now you want to now, uh, sh you, want to sh you want to fall back to now obeying the law that is not of faith. So he talks to them about, about he talks to them about their, uh, their personal conviction that they have witnessed God, that they've seen God at work in their lives. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, sometimes we, 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 we start tripping. We start tripping because we forget what God has done in your life. And many times all you got to do is reach back and see how God, how good God has been in your past and understand this, that if he's done it before, guess what? He will do it again. Are you following me now? And so it is, Paul reaches back and tells them about the, their personal faith. Then he now talks about the Old Testament theology. He begins to talk about Abraham. He points them to Abraham and says this, Was Abraham justified before circumcision or was he justified after circumcision? He points to them about the, he points to them to, uh, to, the, to the pivotal scripture that says in, in Genesis 15 verse 6, it says, and Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. So he says, the promise or, he says the promise or the, 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 the grace given 430 years before the law does not annul itself just because the law was given. Are you following me? You got you to follow along with me. I'm doing, I'm doing some doctor, doctrinal teaching this morning. And so, and so it's not, okay, okay, okay. Okay, we don't do circumcision now, you know, uh, 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 as of, you know, we, we do it as we're birthed. Right, but we don't do it as way of a a religious practice. Somebody gets saved, we say, "Well, praise the Lord, brother. We thank God for you. We thank God for your life. <laughs> we thank God that you've accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of your say, Lord, Lord of your life." Uh, brother Bill, take him back there and, and get him <laughs> get him nicked up. We 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 don't we don't we don't do that. Are you following me now? <laughs> And here, Brother Bill got his got his little got his little blade, like you know, just 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 sharpening his blade. <laughs> no, 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 no. And so and so and so the, the the problem is that would be that would be a deterrence, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Now you know, ladies don't know what I'm talking about. But, but, but my God, I, the man, just thinking about it alone is giving me sweat. I'm just sweating just thinking about it alone. Are, are, you, are you following me now? The, the, the manpower that it would take to hold that man down? I, I mean, I don't, I mean, there's not a, are you following me now? So, so there's a whole lot that will, go, that will go into converting this man to Christendom. And Paul saw the, he saw the revelation of it. Not just the physical pain, 
but that it's not necessary. Are you following me now? Now, we don't do that now in our day, but we do. We, what we do is ascribe works and grace all together. Are you following me now? That, that I've got to work for my salvation. Because the Bible says work out, we, we, we throw scriptures in there, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, now the, the issue about this is not, it's not works as far as root as it is works as far as fruit. What we've embraced is works as far as uh, works as far as root. In other words, the essence of my salvation is what I do. No, no, no. The essence of your works is based on you being saved. The, the Bible says this: you bring forth the fruit that is meat for repentance. It's not saying those. those it, it's not saying the work is for. Is not saying that the work is the is the result of the repentance. No, the repentance is the result of the work. Are you following me now? In other words, because I'm right, I do right things. Not that I do right things to be right. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I'm saved, I do save things. I don't do save things to be saved. I'm already saved. It's a, you, you have to, it's, it, you have to embrace that theology. Okay, let me put it, I, God's not good to me because I'm good. God's good to me because he's good. Are you following me now? You, you can't earn God's approval. For God so loved the world that he already gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's already set in stone. Are you following me now? And so now when we come into this text, I, I want to dive into my, my, my scripture because, because the Bible says this. It says, it says, even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know, know therefore that they which are faith, the same are the children of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing, notice what it says, the scripture what? Foreseeing. It foresaw that God would do what? Justify, hmm? justify the heathens. Now, who are the heathens? <laughs> That's we before Jesus. Yeah, you're a heathen. Amen. Amen. You, you know, your thoughts were hedonistic thoughts. Your ways were hedonistic ways. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, before, be, be, before Christ, I mean, before Christ, their God. <laughs> Before Christ, we, we, did all, we, we did all kinds of stuff. Hmm? Yeah, we did all kinds of things before Christ. But we thank God for his redemptive power. That he changed us. He raised us. He delivered us. Are you following me now? He equipped us. Okay, okay, okay. Now, no, notice what it says. Ah, Notice what it says. It says, the scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathens through faith. Preach, preached before, what? The gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all the nations be blessed. He preached what? The gospel. The gospel. So what do, I, what do I need to hear? I don't need to hear religion. I need to hear the gospel. The Bible says in Mark chapter 1 that Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Hmm? Now if Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, then that means that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John could not be the gospel. Are you following me now? That could not be the gospel. So the, the gospel is the blessing of, have, of Abraham. That's the gospel. Now, notice what it says. It says, Christ, 
well, let, 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 let me let me keep let me let me let me, let me, let me the, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathens through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are what? Are blessed with faithful Abraham. They be who? They be, they be that be of what? But faith. They that be of faith are blessed. So look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm blessed. Yeah, yeah, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed not because of what I have. Huh? I'm blessed because of who I am. Are you following me now? I'm blessed not because, now what is the blessing? The blessing is not your car, it's not your crib, it's not the cash you have, nor the cutie that, that, that you may find yourself next to. That is not the blessing. The blessing is the covenant of God that overrides the curse. What is the blessing? The blessing is the power of God to produce. What is the blessing? The blessing is the anointing of God whereby favor is being dispensed on your life. Are you following me now? So when you say I'm blessed, you ought to know I'm blessed and so what do I do? I expect to, be put, to produce. Hmm? I expect to be productive. Because part of the blessing is be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it and have dominion. Are you following me now? So as a believer, I'm to be productive. Somebody say productive. I'm to be productive. Are you following me now? As a believer, I'm supposed to be fruitful. Fruitful means ever producing. Multiply. It means ever increasing. Replenish means to fill and to refill. Subdue means to take charge. Dominion means absolute governance. Are you following me now? Now, let me jump into my text this morning, lest I run out of time. It says this in verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That is according to Deuteronomy 21 verse 23. Now you see why the Jewish leaders wanted Jesus on a tree. Because of that scripture right there. They wanted the curse of God to fall on him. Not knowing that's what he came for. Are you following me now? The Bible says this, if the, if the princes of this world would have known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Are you following me now? They did not know that they were playing into the plan of God. It was a plan before the foundations of the world. Are you seeing how awesome your God is? That he knows the choice that you would make before you even make that choice. That he knows the thoughts, he knows the actions you make before you even make that action. Somebody say, I found God. How, how can you, how you, how, how you so, how, how small are you that you're going to find God? No, you didn't find God. God found you. The Bible says no man can come to the Father except he does what? Who will draw him? So the reason why you got drawn is because the, in before the foundations of the world, God already predestined you to be drawn that way. Are you following me now? Now, it does not negate, it does not negate a free will of choice. It simply, it simply takes out, it, it simply takes it into, into consideration the omniscient God that knows everything. Are you following me? The sovereignty of God that is everywhere. Are you following me now? And all powerful and all knowing. 
Okay, okay, okay. And so the Bible says that Christ hath, has already, past tense, redeemed you and I from the curse of the law. Now, what does that mean? Okay. The Greek word, let, let, me, let me begin to teach my, my, my message here. The Greek word of the word redeem means exagorazo. 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 Exagorazo means E X A G O R A Z O. Exagorazo. Exagorazo means it is a financial term. Because many times we see things in, in scripture and we think it's all religious words. It's a financial term that says, that refers to the process of purchasing a slave. It is the process of what? Purchasing a slave. Christ has exagorazo us from the curse of the law. He, it, the process of, of, of freeing a slave. Now, and hence... The word redeem means, it means the ransom has been paid. The ransom has been paid. Exagorazo means, it's, it, it means, it means to pay the necessary money to clear a, dirt, a debt. To pay the necessary money to clear a debt. It means to make good on a note. Yeah, anybody ever hold some, anybody ever owed some something to somebody? Okay. And, 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 and you owe me, you say, you, you say, let me hold this, and, and I'm gonna give it to you, you know, uh, two months from now. Hmm? And two months from now, or, or they said it to you, they said, let me hold this, and I'll give it to you two months from now. And two months from now came and they didn't give it to you. Anybody ever had that happen? Yeah, yeah, that's because you didn't, you, 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 that's because there was no exact rattle that happened. Yeah. Yeah, the, the process of redemption, of them paying their debt, did not happen. Are you following me now? And so it means, it means, it means to make good on a note. It means to release, or, or to release from blame, bondage, and judgment. Are you following me now? Exegorazo means to gain or regain possession of something or someone in exchange for something else. Exagorazo. Are you following me now? It, mean, it means, it also means to rescue from bondage and its consequences. So, so you, you, you free a slave, you rescue that slave from the consequence and from bondage. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. Okay, it also means, it also means to restore to honor, worth, and dignity. To do what? To restore to honor, to worth, and dignity. Okay, okay. N now, understand this. The Bible says, the Bible says this. Christ has redeemed us from that curse of the Lord. So he became our exagorazo. Okay. Now, turn your Bibles with me to, um, to Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Proverbs 29 verse 18. And I'm going to read this out of the, um, the classic translation version of the Bible. The amplified classic translation. Notice what it says. In the classic, the amplified classic translation, it says this in verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God. When people don't know that God is your exagorazo. Are you following me now? Guess what happens? The people perish. Now, that word perish don't mean die and go to heaven. That word perish means to lack the necessities of life. Are you following me now? It's connected to what we call perishables. You go to the grocery store and what happens? You buy what? Perishables. What are those? 
vegetables. It means they don't last long. Hmm? You can't put them on the shelf in your, in your pantry indefinitely. Are you following me now? What happens? They die because at some point they were disconnected from the source. Because they were disconnected from the source, their dying process begins right after you take them from the source. Though you don't see the, the, you don't see the actual manifestation until time, until time pass from that point. What am I saying? Where there is no exaggeraxo revelation, the people are detached from the source. And because they are detached from the source, they will eventually perish. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. Then it says this. It says, it says, but he who keeps the law or of God, which includes that of man, blessed, fortunate, and inevitable is he. Now, the, the message translation says it this way. It says this. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all, all, all over themselves. When people can't see what God is doing, what am I saying? The idea of redemption shows you and I what Jesus has done. Now, what did he do? Let's go to the, let's go to, huh? Let's go to, let's go to, ah, Psalm. Let's go to Psalm. Forty-nine, Psalm forty-nine, Psalm. Ah. Let's go to. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me do. Okay, let's do that. Let's do, let's do Psalm 49. Let, let, let's do that. Then we'll do Psalm. Ah, oh, let's see here. No, let's go to Psalm 130. Psalm 130. Let's go to Psalm 130. Just, just do it like, I'm mean, just do it like I put it, in, just put in my notes. Ain't that, ain't that good? Just do it like I put it down, huh? Ain't it? Okay, 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 I'm hunting something here, okay. 130 verse 7, but let's, um, ah, okay, okay, give me a second here. Psalm. What did I say go? 130? Okay. Let me see. Let me see. If, if, let me see. Let me see. Then I said, then I said 49, didn't I? Okay. 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 All right. Let me see. Let me see. I want to, I want to give you, want to give you something here. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to, let's go to Psalm. Let's go to, one, let's go to Psalm 149. That's why I said go first, didn't I? Yeah. That's why I should have gone. Okay. No, Psalm 49. Excuse me. Psalm 49. Hold your place in 130 because we're going to go right, we're going to go right there. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Psalm 1, Psalm what? Psalm 1, Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 49. Let's, let's do that. Amen. Praise God. Notice what it says. It says, none of them can by any means redeem his brother. I, I want to show you that, that it, was, it was only Christ that could redeem you and I. Are, are you following me now? And, and so what is, what is, it says, none of them. None of them, 49 verse 7, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for, for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever. Now, I'm going to read this also in the classic, in the classic translation, uh, uh, the classic, 
And notice what it says. Amplified version. And verse 7, see what it says. It says, none of them can by any means redeem either himself or his brother. So you and I could not redeem ourself nor our brother. Why? Now, okay, okay. So the idea of redemption is that you and I owed something. We owed something. Are you following me now? Th there was a payment that had to be made. When, when Adam fell in the garden in Genesis chapter 3, he fell from his, his rightful position because of disobedience. As a result, Satan now owned him. Are you following me? Are you following me now? When he fell from when he fell from grace, he switched gods without knowing. Just because you don't know doesn't make, doesn't make it right. Are you following me now? In other words, if you if you run a, if you run a red light and you did not know it, and a cop is there. You're still going to get pulled over whether you knew it was red or green. Are you following me now? And so, and so it is, uh, uh, Adam, by way, of, by way of not fully understanding what he was doing, switched gods. And so now, the God of this world, which was Adam's position, Satan now became that because Adam gave it to him. That's why when Jesus came, when Jesus came in, in, in Luke chapter 4, Satan said this, all you have to do is bow down to me and I will give it to you. Why? Because it was delivered unto me. Are you following me now? Now, if that was not true, no, if it was not, a, if it was not true and if it, it, if it could not happen, that it would not have been a temptation. Are you following me now? And so Jesus could have bowed down and Satan could have given him what he, what, what, what he owned. Are you following me now? But that was not the way for redemption. I said that was not the way for redemption. Redemption demands something has to be paid. That's why the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says this. It says, you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify the Father in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You belong to God. Somebody say, I belong to God. You belong to God. You don't belong to a man. You don't belong to a woman. You belong to God. You don't, are you following me? You don't belong to a man. You belong to God. Are you following me now? And so, and, so, and so this idea of redemption was too costly. Nobody could pay the price. Nobody could pay the price. And so uh, what, I, what I, I want you to begin to, as, as, we are, as we are talking about this, I want you to begin to see your worth. Your worth. You are not what you weigh. You are not what you look like. You are not the pedigree of the education you have. Are you following me now? You are a child of the most high God. And what is your worth? Your worth is the essence, the precious, priceless blood of God. Because that's the only thing that purchased your redemption. Are you following me now? So how much are you worth? You are, much, you are, you are, you are worth as much as how much the blood of God worth. Are you following me now? You are worth the blood of God. How much is that? It's priceless. You can't put a price on the blood of God. Are you following me now? Now, let's, let's now see this in Scripture. See what it says. It says this. It says, none of them can by any means, no, 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 by any means redeem either himself or his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the ransom of a life is too costly. Somebody said too costly. It's too costly. Amen. So, so you taking your life, that's too costly. It's because you don't know your worth. How are you going to take your life that is too costly? You, you, you take your life based on what? On what you know now, not what you could become. 
is what? It's too costly. Ain't nobody, you can't pay me enough to take my life. Shit, you're going to have to kill me. <laughs> I, I, I love myself too much to think, are you following me now? Yeah, 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 even though, yeah, 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 I, I may not, you know, I may, you know, I, I know here, you know, somebody said, well, were you not, are you afraid to die? No, I'm not afraid to die. No, I'm, I, I, but, but I'm not ready either. Are you following me now? I'm not afraid to die, but I'm not, I'm prepared, but I'm not ready. Are you following me now? So I'm going to do all that I can to stay up, on, up, up in here because I know this place. Somebody say, you go to heaven. Yeah, I thank God for heaven, but I don't know what heaven looks like. Are you following me now? Yeah, I don't fully know what it looks like. I know what the Bible says it does, but I like what I, I, like what I see here. Yeah, even the crazy here, I like it. Are you the confused here? I like it. Are you following me now? The backward here, I like it too. Are you following me now? Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to stay here as long as I can, which is 120. I said 120. With full capability. And are you following me now? And, 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 are you following? In other words, I'm going I'm to I'm be 120 like, like Moses. His eyes was not deemed, you know, his natural forces aborted. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. 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 120. I, I'll be. I'll get. I still get my. I still get my lean on. Amen. 120. I still got my step on. Amen. Praise God. 120. Shoot. Are you following me now? I'll be rolling out my own bed, kissing my own wife. Amen. Praise God. 120. Amen. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to um. Notice what it says. It says it's too costly. Somebody say too costly. Too costly. Too costly. Let's go to, let's go, let's go to Psalm 130. Psalm 130 verse 7. Psalm 130 verse 7. As we, begin to, as, we, as we begin to unfold this. Notice what it says. Notice what it says in verse 7. 130 verse 7. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. Are you following me now? It's plenteous what? Redemption. Now, now in the previous verse, they said it was, it was, it was, it was, it was not just plenteous, but what, what was it? It was precious. Are you following me now? Or it was too costly. Now, let's go to, um, let's go to, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18. As we begin to see how the Old Testament is unfolded or unfolds in the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18. Redemption. The Bible says it this way in Luke Chapter 19, verse 10, it says, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. What? That what? Which was lost. So part of redemption is to restore man based on what was lost. Are you following me now? So the answer is, what was lost? Because we, we, uh, among other things, redemption suggests that in redemption, what, what I lost is now regained. What I lost because of what I owed is now given back to me based on, based on being restored. Are you following me now? Now, let's see what was lost. Because part of redemption suggests, it says, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So what was lost? Number one was man's identity. His identity was lost. He did not know who he was. That's why when man fell, he grabbed hold on fig leaves and tried to clothe himself. Could you imagine clothing yourself with fig leaves? Huh? Boy, you'd be itch itching all over. <laughs> Are you following me now? 
That's an itching day. I mean, just scratching all over. But he, he did not know who he was. The reason why he had to clothe himself was because in the garden he had a personal clothe that you couldn't see. It was the glory of God. But once he fell, that clothes was removed. The Bible calls it the garments of praise was removed. Are you following me now? And so now, because his natural tendency was that he was always clothed, he had to go and grab something. And he, he grabbed fig leaves. That's the best he could do. Fig leaves. I said that's the best he could do. Now, don't laugh at Adam. Because some of us have made some dumb, some dumb choices based on what's a, what, what we've conjured up with our old head. How in the world are you doing that? Notice, notice, Paul says, oh, foolish Galatians. Yeah, yeah. You, some of us could put our name right there. Oh, foolish Michael. Are you following? Anybody been foolish before? I'm, I, I put my two hands up at my leg. Are you following me now? Yeah. Now, 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 what, what, what did we lost? Let me give you this. Let me give you this. Then we go into 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. Number one was man's, man's identity. Number two is man's dignity. His dignity. His self-respect. His worth. His esteem, esteem. His dignity. Number three, number three, number three. Man's destiny. So, 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 you could, you could, I mean, you could just see this man, this man called Adam, that was ruling everything, reigning everything, naming everything, fell from his original position. As such, now he's being kicked out of a place that was his. That's shame in that, isn't it? Are you following me now? You ever got foreclosed on? Hmm? Hmm? Ever got, I, you follow, in other words, this is my house. But because I disobeyed God, now I got to leave. It did, someone, it did something to his self-worth. Oh, you ever got fired from a job? Yeah, you ever got let go? Boy, I'll humble you. <laughs> Amen. I was, uh, <laughs> I was in, um, I was, uh, I was, I was in the retail industry. And this 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 point this point I was courting my my soon wife, and uh, you know I, and I would pick up the phone and call her, and back in the day, um, back in the day, uh, you know the, the, it wasn't like the phones was not like built like like now right when you call another state, uh, then you, they charge you for being called another state. However, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the office, and so, and there was still a disconnect between a landline and a cell phone, right? And so I'm over here doing my, because it's in the middle of the night, and, and, and you know those, them puppy loves, that like you, you got to talk to each other at night, and, and then sleep and all that stuff, and wake up, what you doing, what you doing, what you doing, what you doing? Well, well I was doing, I was doing, what you doing, what you doing at work, amen? And uh, I was doing my work, because my, my, part of my work is I'm in the office doing paperwork. And so I would have her on speakerphone and be doing my work, but still talking to her at the same time. Unknown to me that I should have called with my cell phone, but I called with the landline. The landline the, the, the connotes that they are being, they're being charged for, uh, for, uh, 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 for, for that, for that out-of-state number. The problem is there's a disconnect because she is just five miles down the road. However, her number is in another state. Are you, are you seeing a disconnect here? So I'm talking to her. She's five miles down the road, but, but her number is in another state. So I'm talking, in essence, the phone bill suggests that I'm talking to somebody in another state. And so I'm accruing the cost that I did not even know that I had. So my boss comes to me one day. I'm doing a banging job. I'm knocking stuff out. I'm, I'm you know, I'm at the top of my game. I'm killing it. And my, my boss comes to me one day and says, today's your last day. Without, 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 any, without any warning, without any, without any slap on the hand, I don't, know if they wanted, I don't know if they wanted to make an example out of me, but that was my last day. That was humbling. And I was, I was, I was, I was, I was trying to get, I was almost, I was, I was really in the process of, 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 uh, of, uh, of planning my, 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 uh, my wedding. And so I had to pay for all these things and I had no job. Yeah. 
Are you following me now? Yeah. So, so, so I, had to rely, I had to now dig down deep and find a job before I got married. Because I couldn't tell my father-in-law, what are you doing? Well, I ain't doing nothing. I just got fired. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't help. I couldn't, I couldn't say that out of my mouth. So I worked night and day. I worked night and day to find a job. And before we got married, I had a job. A better job than I had the previously. Are you, what am I, you can't keep the kid down. I said, you can't keep me down. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you put me, I'm a bounce back bigger and better than when I got under. Are you following? You can't put me down. Why? Because I know I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. And so this idea of redemption suggests that you've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, what is the curse? Because the curse, in, in essence, is, the, is depicted in, in De Deut Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, all the way down to 64. List, list the curse of the law. Now, let's go there because I want you to see what you've been redeemed from. Now, we went there last week, but I want, I want you to see this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Hmm. And uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15. And I'm going to read this out of the, hmm. Ah, let's see here. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to read this out of the, um, I'm going to read this out of the, the um, NIV, the New Living Translation. Okay, okay. I'm going I'm, I'm to read this. It says, however, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to read this very quickly here because I don't want to spend too much time here, but I want, to see, I, want you to, I want you to see what you have been redeemed from. Now, the problem with this is that many times we embrace the curse and we say things like, well, uh, God is trying to teach me something. Uh, what we say, well, well, uh, what will be, will be. We say, well, 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 this is, this is just us, this is just my season. Are you following me now? And we are embracing the curse. But I need you to understand that Christ has already, that you don't have to, okay, you don't have to pay for the same real estate twice. He already paid for it. When he hung on the cross, and the Bible says this, he said in, in, in John 19 verse 30, he says this, to test the lie. To test the lie says, it is paid in full. It's paid in full. Folks, when I saw this, when I saw this over 27 years ago, boy, my, my whole life changed. My whole life changed. That I am redeemed from the curse. I'm redeemed. In other words, there, there should be no expression of the curse in my life. Sickness and disease is part of the curse. It should not be in my life. Let me let me put it in, let me put it in another let me put it in another, in another, in another way. Whatever whatever was not in the Garden of Eden before Adam fell is not permitted to be in my life. Was sickness in the garden before he fell? No. Was poverty in the garden? Was confusion in the garden? Was stress in the garden? Was worry in the garden? Are you following me now? If all those things were not in the garden, why are you permitting those things to be in your life? Christ has redeemed you and I from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us because it is written, Cursed is anyone that hangs on the tree. Notice, notice what it says. Notice what it says. Now, the Bible says it this way. In, 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 in Proverbs 26, it says this. A curse causeless shall not come. In other words, if there is an expression of the curse on your life, there is a reason behind that curse. Notice, notice. In Numbers, okay, okay. Ah, let, let, me, let, 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 let me do this. Let me do this. I am, let me do this. In Numbers... In Numbers, in Numbers, um, in Numbers 23, the Bible says how Balak, uh, uh, Balak, uh, how Balak hired Balaam to curse the people of Israel. 
he, he tried to proclaim a curse on them. The Bible says it this way. It says, Balaam, uh, Balaam, says, Balaam tells uh, uh, Balak, he says, how can I curse whom God has blessed? How can I curse whom God has blessed? You've got to understand that the blessing of Abraham is on your life. And so the curse is not permitted to be in your life. Curse is not permitted to be in your life. No, 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 no. Notice what it says there. It says in 28, verse 15, Deuteronomy, however, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all his commandments and degree, decrees I'm giving you today, all these curses will come on you and will do what? Overtake you. Now, when you hear this, you ought to first of all analyze and say, is this in my life? Then you ought to say, it ought not be in my life. Are you following me now? Because knowingly or unknowingly, we let the curse come in. The Bible says that if, if the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. Yeah. Somehow we've let the hedge, we've opened the hedge. Now, what is the hedge? It is the hedge of protection. You remember, you remember uh, uh, Satan said this to, to, about Job. You put a hedge of protection around him. Hmm? The hedge of protection is the blessing wall. The blessing wall. In other words, a thousand will fall by your side. Huh? Ten thousand by your right hand side. But what happens? It does not come nigh you. Why? Because you got a blessing wall. But what happens if you let the blessing wall down? If you kick, if you kick the wall and now you have a little opening in, in, in the wall. Well, the Bible says the serpent, if the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. Are you follow me now? The biting is the sickness and disease, the poverty and lack, the confusion, the depression, the anxiety, the worry. Are you, that, that is part of the curse. And you ought to fight back by saying, it is not supposed to be in my life. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. Now, it says, curse be in the city, curse in the country. Your baskets and, and your kneading uh, don't, uh, uh, th through she will be cursed. Fruit, fruit of your womb will be cursed. The crops of your land, the, ca the calves uh, of your herds, the lambs of your flocks. Will, you will be cursed when you come in and curse what? When you go out. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, rebuke, rebuke and rebuke in every, everything you put your hands to do until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruins because of the evil that you done in forsaking him. The Lord will plague you with all with, with you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land uh, you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with the waste and disease, with fever, with inflammation, with scorching, with heat, with drought, and with belight, and with mildew, and will plague you until you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze, the ground beneath you iron. The Lord will turn the ruins of this country into dust and powder, and it, it will come uh, down from the skies until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeat before your enemies. You will come at them one direction and flee from them in seven. And, will, and, and you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms on the earth. Your carcasses will be food for all the birds, your, will, uh, your wild animals, and there will be no one to, to, to frighten them away. The Lord will afflict you with the balls of Egypt, with tumors, with feasting, uh, uh, sores of itches, uh, from which you cannot be cured, cured, the Lord will afflict you with madness, with blindness, with confusion of mind. At noonday, you will grope about like a blind person in the dark, and you will be unsuccessful in everything you do. The day after day, you will be oppressed and robbed with no one to do what? To rescue you. Now, all that is what? Part of the curse. What are you, what, what are you, what, what are you, what are you redeemed from? From the curse. So all that should not be in your life. So instead of going out one way and, and, and then fleeing seven ways, guess what? You go out, you, you, guess what? The, your enemy will come against you one way, and guess what that happens? They flee seven ways. Blessed will be in your storehouse. 
Blessed will be when you go in. Matter of fact, let's just let's read the um, let's read the, the blessing side. Somebody say the blessing side. Yeah, De Deuteronomy twenty. Let's go to Deuteronomy De Deuteronomy uh, 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 verse one twenty eight verse one. Because I want you to see the blessing side. Because that, that's where you should set your faith on. Your faith should be what? On the blessing side. Are you following me now? Now, see what it says. It shall come to pass. What happens? It shall come to pass if you, if, if you shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all the commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Are you seeing this here now? Now, Part of redemption demands that you are redeemed, in, you find this in Revelation chapter 5, you are redeemed to be a priest and a king. Now, let, let's, let's look at that. Hold your place here. Because when I'm, look, when I'm talking about nations, I want you to begin to see yourself there. Hmm? I want you to begin to see yourself lending to nations. Hmm? Lending to what? To nations. And people are doing that now. Yeah. The Bill Gates, the, uh, you know, the, the Elon Moss, what are they doing? They're lending to nations. They're doing that now. Hmm? The Jeff Bezos, what are they? They're lending to what? To nations. Okay. Let's see this. Somebody said, well, Pastor, I'm making six figures. That's, that's bottom line. You just, you don't, you, you're not even, you haven't started yet. You ain't even started yet. Uh, thank God you're making it. Thank God for what you're making. But you ain't even started yet. You, you're still far from where God wants to take you to. So don't get the big head. Stay humble. Are you following me? Keep God first. Stay tithing. Stay honoring God. Okay. Folks, <laughs> okay. Yeah, when I started, I was making minimum wage. But guess what, what I was doing? I was honoring God. Somebody said, well, I can't afford to die. Tied, you can't afford not to. You're going to stay down for a long time. Long time to come. No way up. Are you following me now? I get to. It's, it's not, it, nobody's trying to take nothing from you because you ain't giving it now know how. <laughs> I'm trying to show you how to be blessed. Come on to the other side. You've been, do, how, my question is, how has it been working for you? You've been robbing God all this time, been in church all this time, and robbing God all this time. How's it working for you? Hmm? Some of us that have, that have, that have, have said we're going to honor God and we're going to put God first, you see God moving us up, level to level. Are you following me now? What am I saying? I'm saying he's, already, he's redeemed you from the curse. But you've got to, you got to, you got to flow in this grace. Now, when it says God is, when it says, you know, the Lord will cause your enemies to rise up, you know, when it's saying that, it doesn't mean God is the cause of it as he is allowing it to happen. And the reason why he allowed it to happen, you know, it's like, it's like you know, your, your, your child goes to school and acts a fool. No, he's still a, he's still a child. But now whooping, whooping shows up. That's not your fault. They allowed it to happen. It breaks my heart to whoop you, but I got to whoop you so you can learn. Are you following me now? He, you allowed it to happen, so, it got, so the process just got, you just got to turn your tail and get your whooping, just like everybody else. Right, because you knew exactly what you were doing when you did what you did. You cut the fool, you get the whooping. Are you following me now? You don't cut the fool, you get the blessing. Are you following? Simple. Simple. I said, well, it's simple. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So, notice what it says. In Romans 5, Romans 5, see what it says. And in verse, ah, in verse, let's look at in verse, um, in verse 9. See what it says. Romans 5, verse 9. And they sang a new song. I got the close. They sang a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals, therefore, for, for thou was slain, and has done what? Redeemed us to God by thy blood. Understand this. It was only the blood of God that could have redeemed you and I. Only the blood of God. Are you following me now? So 
you cannot say redemption without saying the blood. That's why he would say this. That's why he would say this. He would, he would look at you and he would say this. He would say, he, he would say, he would say, thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord and there is none beside me. Hmm? He earned that right. He earned that right. He earned the right to be your Lord. Are you following me now? Now, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. It says this. It says, for thou was slain and has redeemed us. Who? Us. Somebody say us. Somebody say me. Yeah. He redeemed us uh, to God by his blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. And see what it says. And has made us unto our God kings and priests that we shall reign on the earth. You're made what? Kings and priests. Kings in the marketplace. Priests in the church. In the marketplace. You should, you should be kings. In the church, what? Priest. He's made us kings. So whatever you find yourself in, you ought to be a king. You ought to be a king. Otherwise, what am I saying? You ought to be on top. What are you, being, what are you doing so low down there? Down the, the orchard. You ought to be on top. Now, it don't mean you ought to covet your supervisor's spot, but it, ought, it does mean you ought, you, ought, you, ought to be, you ought to do your best every single day, but also understand that you ought, to, you ought to do what it takes to get promoted. Are you following me now? You don't show up, show up you know, you, know you, show, you, you, you over here 30 minutes late, 40 minutes late, talking about how you all doing. How you all doing? You late. Okay, okay. Now, let, let's go back. So notice, we're redeemed, we're, we're, we are redeemed as kings and priests. So let's, let's, let, let's finish reading this. Let's finish reading Deuteronomy and we're done. Deuteronomy, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. See what it says. Because I want you to see that this is what's, this is what's, this is what's, this is what's on your life. Are you following me now? Now. It says, and all these blessings in verse 2 shall come on you and overtake you if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your, your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of, your, of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kin, the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy baskets and thy stock. Now, notice what he's saying. He's really just, now he's really saying things in agricultural terms, but understand that it applies to you. When it says your store, it's talking about your storehouse. Now, you don't have a physical store, but it's saying your bank account ought to be blessed. Are you following me now? The fruit of your body, your, are you, all the fruit of, what comes out of you ought to be blessed. Are you, you or your son or your daughter say you blessed. Now you may be acting crazy, but you blessed. You ain't got no choice but to be blessed. Are you following me now? Why? Because you come out of me. You, you, the fruit. You're the fruit of my body. You're blessed. Are you following me now? Otherwise, and also me. Are you? Are you following? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. L let me keep going. Okay. 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 Bless. It says, "Blessed shall thou be when thou comes in, and blessed shall thou be when thou go out." And so you ought not be in panic when you're leaving the house. Worried about if you're coming back home. You are coming back home. I told my wife, I'll always come home. Always I'll come home. Are you following me now? Even when we had a, even when we had a, a snowstorm where everybody stayed, at almost, you know, half the folks in the office stayed put, I'm going home because I always come home. I slid and, 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 and you know, slid and, 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 and stopped and, and slid and slopped, stopped and drove and stopped and slid, but I came home. Why? Because I'm blessed going in, and what? And blessed going out. Blessed shall be thy, the, the, Lord, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way. They shall flee what? Seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in all thy storehouse. Now, that part, part of the blessing, part of that the blessing is connected to the tithe. 
you go to you go to Malachi, it says this. The, it says this. It says it says it says I'll open the heaven and pour you out the blessing that you're not going to have room enough to contain. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Anyways, okay. Then it goes on to say this. It says. It says, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy, in thy storehouse and in, thy, in, and, in, in, and in all that thou settest thy hands to do. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou wilt keep his commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Now, what am I saying? Now, it also means that we can't be CIA Christians. Hmm? Yeah, CIA. You, you know, you, you're saved, but folks don't know you're saved. The reason why you don't want them to know you're saved because you want to because you want to keep laughing at their jokes, talking their talk, cursing like they curse. Are you following me now? No, you ought to be. The, the people ought to know that you're saved, and they ought to bless God because of you. Are you following me now? Now it don't mean you ought to shout it down talking about I'm saved. No, no. Let your fruit. The Bible says by their fruit they will know them. Are you following me now? Come on, I'm, anybody, you, ain't, you ain't impressing nobody by saying you're saved because you're still acting crazy. Matter of fact, you are embarrassing God. Do us a favor and say nothing. Are you following me now? Okay, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. The Lord shall make thee plenteous. What? It says plenteous in what? In goods. The fruit of thy body, in the fruit of the cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee the good treasures, the heaven to give thee rain unto the land in, the, in his season and to bless all the works of your hands. Are you following me now? So what does that mean? It means whatever you do ought to prosper. You ought, you ought to put faith on it. You ought to put faith on it. Okay, okay, okay. Notice what it says. Thou shalt lend to many nations, and what? And thou shalt not borrow. The Bible says that the servant, uh, the lender is, is, is the servant of the, uh, 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 the borrower is the servant of the lender. Yeah, the borrower is the servant of the lender. In other words, you ought to be on top. It don't mean borrowing is wrong. It just means that you ought to be, you ought to flip it, flip it around. You ought to be the one lending and not borrowing. Amen. Okay. Okay. It also means that you may have to put up that dumb credit card bill that you keep spending, spending stuff that you don't have. It means you got to stop spending. Are you following me now? Now, you can't keep spending and your, your, your income is not rising up to your spending. At some point, you ought to know I got to stop spending so that, my in, so, that, so that my outgo does not exceed my inflow. Okay. 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 It says, uh, and thou shalt lend to many nations, thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee what? The head and not the tail. The head what? And not the tail. You ought to be what? The head. Where? The where? I got to be on, on the head. That's, that's biblically. It's not, it's not you trying to, you know, somebody say, well, I don't want to be ambitious. No, it's not you trying to be ambitious as, is you, as, as it is you fulfilling scripture. It's just scriptural to be on top. Are you following me now? Okay. Okay. Well, Pastor, I want to be on, I want, I want to be the tail. Well, praise the Lord. Just stay there then. Just stay there and leave me alone. Okay. It says, thou shalt, thou shalt be what? Above what? Sometimes. And every now and then. Maybe when the season how comes to your life. Only. What am I saying? When you look at this scripture, you begin to, what, what, what are you, what should you be doing? You should begin to, you should appreciate where you are, embrace where you are, but you ought to know there's, 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 another, there's, there's another level than this. Are you, you should be excited as to where you are, but you should know, okay, there's another level than where I am right now, that I'm to be above only. So that means if I see, if, 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 that, means, that, that means that wherever I'm, wherever I'm at, 
This should be a path to go on up. Are you following me now? What am I saying? In other words, you shouldn't be in a place where, that, where you're just capped. You can't go up. You can't go down. This is it for you. No, you're in the wrong place because you ought to be above. Amen? Okay, okay, I got the close. I got the close. One more scripture. It says this. It says this. Um, if thou wilt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I commanded this day to, to do it and to observe, observe, do them. It says this. And thou shalt, thou shalt not go aside from, from the words which I command thee this day to the right hand, to the left hand, uh, to go after other gods and to do what? And to serve them. Then it goes into the curses. What am I saying? You're blessed. You've been redeemed from the curse. And because you've been redeemed from the curse, the blessing is on your life. And you follow me now. The Bible says it is the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich. It adds no sorrow. And you follow me now. So part of that, part of the blessing, part of the blessing is that I'm supposed to receive the blessing of heaven on my life. Why? Because Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. He's already paid the price. And because he's already paid the price, you and I can live in victory. Are you following me now? So if I see, if I see the expression of the curse on my life, I ought to say it ought not be in my life. Are you following me now? Now, how does that happen? The Bible says in, 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 uh, in Psalm 107 verse 2, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord, what? Say so. Say so. David said this, uh, the, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my God, and what? My Redeemer. My Redeemer. Amen. So those words, those words ought to be words of victory. Words of freedom. Words of liberation. Words that, that, that pull you up. And not bring you down. You ever, you ever, you ever known, or you ever, you ever really, you ever uh, paid attention that when you keep speaking down words, you go down. Your emotions go down. You, you get depressed. Amen. You, you ever, you ever had a bad, you know, uh, uh, you know, maybe a a, a a a a situation that that maybe somebody upset you. Amen. And you start telling that to somebody else, and you got upset all over again. Are you far? Anybody? Ain't no, 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 yeah, you got upset all over again. And almost you almost wanted to go and just drive to that person's house and just slap the taste out their mouth all over again. Huh? Why? Because words create your environment. The effect. Are you, that's why it says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Say so. You ought to say so. You ought to say so. Are you following me now? You ought to say so. And if you say so, it won't be long before you see what you're saying so to. Are you following me now? Do you receive that today? Or somebody give God praise and give him glory in the house of God this morning? I said give him glory in the house of the Lord this morning. Father, we love you, God. Stand to your feet. Father, we love you, God. We give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for the glory of God. Thank you for the blessing of heaven. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives on a daily basis. Spirit of God, have your way in our lives. Have your way in our situation. Be God in everything that we do. We honor you today and we bless you for all that we will receive and all that has been done in the name of Jesus. We bless you to this morning and we lift you up. We praise you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Somebody give God praise and give God glory in the house of God. Amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. I never want to close the broadcast without giving you an opportunity to, um, to acknowledge that God spoke to you today. Heads about, eyes are closed. You say, Pastor, this word blessed my soul. 
those of us that are online, you say, Pastor, I want to acknowledge that God, God spoke to me today. If you're here today and if you're here on ground today or online, I want to give you that opportunity. You say, Pastor, I need to change some things. I need to put some things aside. And I need to follow hard after God. I know that it's the goodness of God that causes me to be in this situation that I, I am in right now. It causes me to acknowledge that I need a Savior. You're here today and you say, Pastor, God spoke to me. And I want to acknowledge it. If that's you this morning, just signify, raise up your hand, wave it high and put it down. I see those hands all over the room. Those of us that are online, I'll pray for you right now. I say in the name of Jesus that you experience all that God will have you to experience. That that, that lack, that, that, that area of, that area of, of, um, of, um, of disobedience has come to the light. And that you, you would fully, you would fully rise up to the occasion and obey God. Fully rise up to the occasion and say no, no to whatever is trying to hold you down. Hold you in bondage. Hold you back. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you are free because Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. He's been made a curse for you so you don't have to suffer with that thing, not no more. Speak to every pain, speak to every disease, speak to every lack, speak to every shortcomings, speak to every, every, every oppression. I command it to go in the name of Jesus and I declare freedom is yours. In Jesus' name, somebody give God praise and give him glory in the house. Give him praise and give him glory in the house. Glory! Give him praise and give him glory. Amen, amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, well, quickly, you may, you may be seated. You want to sow your seed into what God is doing in here. Those of us online, go to our platform, credensga.org. Um, go ahead and do that, and the Lord will bless you for it. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. CredenceGA.org. Credence, C-R-E-D-E-N-C-E-G-A.org. So you see there, the Lord will bless you for it. We want to thank you for your past, your present, and your future given. You are helping to make it happen. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. We declare every penny represents a person, every nickel represents a name, and every dime represents a de destiny. As you give in faith, we declare the blessing of heaven is yours in the name of Jesus. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Well, until we see each other again face to face, I am Pastor Michael of Shaley. This is Credence Church, and we say we love you. God loves you, and you have a wonderful day. God bless you.